we've engaged in a different way of looking at it. So it's about a mental change for those of us who have lived here for many years, changing the way we think about how we talk about our city. It's about giving pride back to us as people to understand that we have a unique proposition in Christchurch. We are New Zealand's oldest city and we're well underway to being New Zealand's newest city. And it's not just our central city that we're talking about, we're talking about the whole city. And that today includes a vast range out through Selwyn districts and the Waimakariri as well. Because so many of our residents did move and we now have extra opportunity within our city of Otatahi because the expansion has happened. We have things in Christchurch that aren't available elsewhere, so let's talk about what some of those might be. When you think of Christchurch, what do you think of? What do you think of that might be something that's different about Christchurch? Perhaps you could tell me. I normally think about this area. So you think about the cultural precinct. Okay, so what, what things in the cultural precinct might be a little key um, about it being an explorer, an explorer of science or an explorer, an explorer of the past or the explorer of our land? Any ideas? The, the history of the building in Hagley Park and places, yeah? Are there any key people in our history of Christchurch that we... Ernest Rutherford, yeah. So what was he an explorer of? He was an explorer of science. He split the atom. We're going to split like the atom shortly and head off around Otatahi, but he explored a world that most of us have no understanding of even today. And he did it right here in Christchurch. He walked our streets, including the Cape Adair artifacts which are there at the moment. And Von Haas, yes, he was very significant. And who are you suggesting, sir? I was going to say, whatever happened to um, the fact that we were a settlement of the Church of England and uh, pastoralism? I don't think that's been forgotten. It's just it's, it's it's part just of how that story develops. But that's what that's where the wealth for all this all these buildings and so yeah. on. Okay. This was a very wealthy city. It, it was a very wealthy city. It also had a lot of people with a lot of foresight. That's why we have a rail tunnel and we, why we had a dry dock. So when Scott and Shackleton turned up, they could actually put their um, ships into a dry dock and clean them up when nowhere else had a dry dock like that. Um, we had a sewage system a long time before a lot of other places. All sorts of things happened in Christchurch that were really key to who we are. We are and always will be the garden city. It's not something that we're looking to forget. It's a key part of Christchurch and it's a key part of who we will be, whether you have green fingers or not, but it's also a part of how we look at the parks that we have been endowed with in Christchurch. So there's a short video clip that um, Christchurch NZ put together which expresses a lot of those sorts of stories. It's a way for you to see it visually as well as to hear it and then obviously to see it as we drive around the city. So perhaps if we could just spend a few moments and have a look at it. Thank you very much, Daryl. The lifeblood of a city is its people. People provide the character and the energy of a city. All Tortai, Christchurch, our city, is founded on the spirit of exploration. It is embedded in our city's DNA. Our history has been shaped by it. Our present is built upon it, and our future will be created by it. Christchurch has always been about new beginnings, explorers, innovators, and people oh, doing shit. things different. Our people are explorers, challenging the status quo, exploring ideas with impact and shaping our future. Our city is creative, or 
organic and evolving. It is a place to grow, connect, and find balance. Explore our past, our present, and our future. Explore all total Christchurch. Would you like to say it again? No. Bullshit. So, um, and it is something I think that's really worth sharing. It's quite powerful in its, its presentation of who we are as Christchurch. Perhaps it's something just to have a look at online yourself. You can look it up on the Christchurch story, um, just to sort of familiarise yourself. And they are all places that were just, you know, they're all part of us. They're all part of who we are and how we connect with the place that we choose to live in. Are there any questions about why we would have a narrative and what it might be used for and that sort of thing? It's, it's really a way for people to present what's happening in Christchurch to the world because we spend a lot of our efforts connecting people to come to Christchurch um, so that they can come with you people and experience what Christchurch is about. So we're going to head off, if, if we can, get around through into uh, Woods Cathedral Square. And you'll all know the Crown Plaza down here, which was uh, has been repurposed as a building for a hotel and uh, it still has almost kept that iconic name for it. And we're also noticing that so many of the hotels in Christchurch these days don't have any or have very minimal conference facilities or rooms because they're all hoping to use the town hall and Tapai when it reopens. When it opens. So Tapai being the new convention centre being built just down um, to our right, which we're going to come along the side of coming past the town hall which has been recently reopened. Um, so the key thing about Victoria Square and we'll hopefully be able to come for a walk back through Victoria Square is that we tend to think of it as Victoria Square. It actually was the Naitahu and before that the Waitaha and Ngāti Māmaui marketplace if you like. So it's a very significant part of Christchurch. It's, it's, we tend to think of it as very much in a European history. It's not. It's where you could come as far up the river on the tide um, is a very significant place all of its own. It's just that we turned the city towards the cathedral square instead of to where it had been. So this is Tapai on our right. Uh, it's planned to be open in October 2020, next, so it's next year. They have their first conferences booked um, for then and the grey pattern on the panels that have now been attached is representative of the braided rivers of Canterbury. Braided rivers are definitely a geological feature that is very important in Canterbury as the water comes down off the uh, mountains and brings the rocks, created the alluvial plains, but they've created this braided rivers. So the patterning that you'll see on the outside of Tapai reflects the um, braided rivers, but Tapai will face out towards the river. Um, so this is actually the back end of Tapai that we're coming through on the square, but there will be an access way through here to our right, right out to the river. So hopefully there's a park here somewhere that we might